the radar operator's coffee goes cold. His screen, empty for 11 minutes, suddenly erupts with three crimson blips crawling towards Swedish airspace. Russian Su-57s, fifth generation hunters. Invisible to most NATO systems, the kind of threat that turns billion dollar defense budgets into wreckage. Stockholm has eight minutes to respond. Eight minutes before three stealth fighters penetrate Nordic sovereignty and vanish back into the fog of electronic warfare. The scramble order hits Sautnes Air Base at 0413. Two pilots sprint across frozen tarmac. No speeches, no hesitation. They mount aircraft most analysts dismissed as too small to matter in modern warfare. Gripen E, engines ignite, afterburners scream. 14 seconds later, airborne. By SO 421, the SU 57s are no longer invisible. By 0423, they're retreating. And by 0425, three of Russia's most advanced fighters are marked for death, tracked, locked, dominated by a jet that weighs less than a Honda Civic and costs half what Moscow spent on each felon. This wasn't fiction. This was the Gripen's silent promise finally delivered. Welcome to the deadliest non-stealth fighter on Earth. The Nordic Paradox Sweden operates with 100th the defense budget of the United States. One citizen for every 134 in China. Zero participation in the European Union's sprawling fighter jet initiatives. No military industrial autocracy like Russia. Yet from the revolutionary Draken to the groundbreaking Vigan, Sweden has engineered combat aircraft that rival superpowers. And the JAS-39 Gripen, fast, nimble, armed to the teeth, now stands as the crown jewel of that legacy. But legacy doesn't win wars. Technology does. And in 2027, the Gripen E variant isn't just competing with F-16s and MiG-29s. It's hunting ghosts. Fifth generation stealth fighters designed to be invisible. Here's the terrifying part. It's winning. Cold War survival doctrine rewind to 1979. Sweden's military philosophy rested on two pillars, total neutrality and total defense. They wouldn't join NATO. They wouldn't bow to Moscow. But they also wouldn't sit idle while superpowers carved up Scandinavia. The strategy wasn't to defeat the Soviet Union. It was to make invasions so costly, so bloody, that Moscow would calculate the conquest as a Pyrrhic nightmare. Sweden needed technology, indigenous technology, aircraft that could deploy from highway strips during emergencies, maintained by conscripts, refueled in 10 minutes, and turned around for another sortie before the enemy regrouped. The Draken delivered first. In 1960, it became the world's first operational double delta fighter, the first to perform the Cobra maneuver, and the first fully supersonic jet deployed to Western Europe. Its successor, the Vigan, arrived in 1971 as the first mass-produced aircraft with front canards and the first to carry a digital central computer. Sweden didn't just build planes, they built revolutions. But by the 1980s, America's F-16 and the Soviet MiG-29 raised the stakes. Sweden needed something better. Something that could match Mach 2, integrate fly-by-wire controls, carry modern weaponry, and operate from 400 meter highway strips covered in snow. They had one shot, one budget, one chance to get it right. Failure meant defenselessness. The Griffin takes flight. In 1987, the JAS-39 Gripen rolled out, a single engine Delta Canard design intentionally made aerodynamically unstable. Pilots couldn't fly it manually. They needed computers. Fly by wire. Trust in silicon. The name came from a public competition. Gripen, Swedish for Griffin. Half lion, half eagle. Mythical, lethal. Test pilot Stig Holmström blasted it into Swedish skies on December 9th, 1988. The program wasn't smooth. Prototypes crashed. One test pilot was injured, a year of delays. Then another airframe destroyed during a public display. But Sweden didn't flinch. They upgraded. The C and D variants integrated in-flight refueling, onboard oxygen regeneration, modern avionics. By the late 1990s, Swedish squadrons were filling with Gripens. Excellence followed. 
And then the world changed. The Hunter's Arsenal. The Gripen CD measures 14.9 meters tip to tail, just under 49 feet. Wingspan, 8.4 meters, smaller than the F-16, dwarfed by the F-15. Empty weight, barely 6,800 kilograms. Maximum takeoff, 14,000 kilograms. Its single Volvo turbofan engine with afterburners generates 18,100 pounds of thrust. Top speed, Mach 2 at altitude, 2,470 kilometers per hour. At sea level, Mach 1.2, still supersonic, still deadly. Combat range, 800 kilometers. Ferry range with full fuel, 3,200 kilometers. Service ceiling, 15,340 meters, 50,000 feet. G-force tolerance, nine times gravity, on par with the best fighters on Earth. But here's where Sweden's doctrine becomes genius. Runway requirements. Landing, 500 meters. Takeoff, 400 meters. The Gripen can launch from snowy highway strips, refuel in the forest, and return to combat in 10 minutes, serviced by five conscripts and one technician. No air bases, no predictability, no targets. Its armament, eight hardpoints carrying six short-range missiles. Iris-T, Sidewinder, A-Darter. Four beyond visual range Meteor, or AMRAM missiles. Air-to-ground munitions, precision bombs. A 27 mm revolver cannon for close engagements. Electronic warfare pods. Expendable RF jammers. The first aircraft to deploy Italy's bright cloud system. If you stand with air superiority, comment power below. The EF revolution. The Gripen E takes flight. 2021, first deliveries. Longer, wider. Heavier by 1,200 kilograms empty. Maximum takeoff weight increased by 2,500 kilograms. New engine, General Electric F414. Higher ceiling, greater fuel efficiency. Extended range. But the real transformation. Avionics, 10 hard points instead of eight. Radar that swivels, the first of its kind, expanding field of view left and right, allowing meteor missiles to strike through enemy radar blind spots while maintaining target lock. Advanced electronic warfare, 360 degree battlefield awareness, onboard artificial intelligence, smart weapons that change targets mid-flight and verify kills, fully NATO interoperable systems. Then there's the decoupled architecture, all software and hardware run independently. Bugs in one system don't cascade. Applications swap in and out as technology evolves. Sab's vision, fight day one, collect data, swap systems overnight, dominate day two. And stealth? The Gripen E isn't classified as a stealth fighter, but it employs a digital cloak, the smallest radar cross-section of any Western non-stealth jet possibly surpassed only by South Korea's upcoming KF-21 Baramai. Its onboard algorithms identify stealth adversaries, Russian Su-57s, Chinese J-20s, with precision that didn't exist five years ago. The Gripen E doesn't hide, it hunts. Simulation, day one of the Nordic War. Wodoim or Luo. Baltic tension zone. Three Su-57 felons cross into international airspace, stealth engaged. Radar absorbent coatings, low observable design. They're ghosts, until Sweden's network-centric warfare grid wakes up. Ground-based sensors triangulate faint anomalies. Data streams to two grip and ease on patrol. The pilots don't see the felons on radar, not yet, but the AI does. It cross-references thermal signatures, electromagnetic emissions, and flight patterns. 04.16, target lock. The Gripen E's swiveling radar pivots 30 degrees left. The felons think they're masked. They're wrong. Meteor missiles, active radar homing, ramjet powered, no escape zone of 60 plus kilometers, leave the rails. The Russian pilots receive missile warning alerts. They bank hard, deploy countermeasures. Afterburners scream, but the meteors don't care. Guided through the Gripen's blind spot exploiting radar, they adjust mid-flight, closing, closing, Impact. Two felons vaporize. The third retreats at Mach 1.8, streaming flares like a comet. The Gripen E doesn't chase. It doesn't need to. By L0423, the Baltic is silent again. Swedish airspace, untouched. Combat record, unproven, unstoppable. 
The Gripen has never logged an air-to-air -air kill in real combat, but in exercises, it's a nightmare. 2006, Alaska. Gripen scores 10 kills, zero losses, eliminates F-16s and a Eurofighter Typhoon. Another Swedish exercise. One Gripen intercepts three F-15Cs, shoots down two. The F-15 boasts a 104 to zero kill ratio in real combat. The Gripen treated it like prey. 2011, Libya. Sweden deployed Gripens to enforce a no-fly zone. 650 combat missions by October. Zero losses, zero engine failures. Over 140,000 flight hours by 2010 without a single engine incident. Only one pilot has died in a Gripen, 2017, at a Thai air show. Otherwise, a spotless safety record. And the world is watching. Global expansions, Brazil. 36 Gripen EF airframes, possibly expanding to 50 plus. Thailand, 11 operational, targeting 25. South Africa, 26 aircraft. Czech Republic and Hungary, one squadron each. The UK operates training variants for test pilots. India is considering 114 Gripens. The Philippines, at least 12. 15 other nations have expressed interest. Most controversial, Ukraine. Sweden has allocated Gripens for donation. Critics argue Ukraine struggles with F-16 training. Gripen proponents counter, faster learning curve, easier maintenance, superior for peer adversary warfare. Cost per flight hour? The Gripen is 50% cheaper than the next alternative, a specific F-16 block model. Jane's Aerospace ranks it number one for affordability. The Gripen wasn't built for empire, it was built for survival. The future waits for no one Sweden is developing a sixth generation fighter, more advanced than the F-22, F-35 or J-20. It will deploy alongside loyal wingman drones, integrate sophisticated AI, and feature near-zero radar signature. But even when that aircraft, codenamed Flig System Demensis, enters production, the Gripen will remain the cornerstone of Swedish air defense and the choice of nations seeking affordable lethality. How long can the Gripen dominate 21st century combat? That's up to the pilots. But if its track record is any guide, Sweden's masterpiece has decades left. The question isn't whether the Gripen can survive the future. The question is whether the future can survive the Gripen.